As we all know, celebrities aren't exactly known for being sensible, and most stars develop a bit of an ego throughout their lives. As such, when they kick the bucket, they sometimes ask to be treated more like Egyptian royalty than average Joes. And perhaps being buried with riches and treasures is a lot like the last great flaunt. But then again, perhaps we're painting a judgmental picture of this practice. Some people simply enjoy the idea of being buried alongside something symbolic of who they were and what they were all about. For example, if you spent your life pursuing the musical arts, it wouldn't be that absurd to be buried with the tuning keys from your beloved guitar or laminated sheet music of your favorite composition. In this video, we'll be taking a look at a few celebrities who were buried with some rather unusual objects. Frank Sinatra Frank absolutely loved Jack Daniel's whiskey. It was his drink of choice, even though he could have easily afforded higher-end booze. His favorite way to drink it was two fingers on the rocks with a splash of water. When he passed away, his family thought it would be fitting to bury him with a flask of Jack to send him off. It's rumored they also buried him with a roll of dimes, but explaining that reason would take a whole video. So here are the cliff notes. In 1963, Old Blue Eyes' son, Frank Sinatra Jr., was kidnapped and held for ransom. When negotiating the deal to get his son to safety, Frank Sr. communicated to his captives strictly by payphone. For years after his son was returned safe and sound, Frank kept a roll of dimes in his pocket just in case. It became more of a symbolic gesture than anything, but those dimes served as a constant reminder of just how deeply he cared for the more important things in life. Humphrey Bogart Before Bogart's cremated remains were interred, they were reportedly joined by a tiny gold whistle that bore an inscription that read, if you want anything, just whistle. The actor had previously given the whistle to his widow, Lauren Bacall, years before. That line came from the 1944 film To Have and Have Not, which was loosely based on a novel by Ernest Hemingway. It was also the first film to star both Bogart and his future wife. While the line is often presented as an actual line of dialogue in the film, it's actually just a simplification of a much longer stream of thought. Bogart would infamously be misquoted once again by fans of his 1942 film Casablanca. Many people swear that the line, play it again, Sam, was in the film, but in fact, it never was. The actual line is just, play it, Sam. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First for more. And stick around to find out what Beat Generation novelist William S. Burroughs was buried with. Tony Curtis in 2010, Tony Curtis's family decided it would be a good idea to bury him with a handful of some of his most cherished possessions, which apparently included a Stetson hat, driving gloves, a worn copy of the book Anthony Adverse, and of course, his iPhone. Maybe they thought he should have a lifeline in case he needed to call up St. Peter or something, but it's safe to say he won't be receiving any more software updates anytime soon. George Burns George Burns was a famous vaudeville, radio, TV, and film comedian who almost always had a cigar in his mouth. Cigars were a major part of his identity and gave him something to do with his hands and mouth. Burns was buried with three fat stogies in his pocket. While we don't know for sure what brand they were, Burns was well known to prefer El Producto Queens. Roald Dahl Dahl, as you probably know, wrote several influential children's books throughout his life, like James and the Giant Peach and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. When he passed away in 1990, his family wanted him to be buried with a few of his favorite possessions. Some of these included his favorite HB brand of pencils, a power saw, a box of chocolates, red wine, and snooker pool cues. John F. Kennedy the 35th U.S. president was an avid collector of scrimshaw, fragments of whale bones and ivory that were engraved with ornate designs. Some of his finest pieces from his collection were proudly on display in the Oval Office when he was president. One of his favorites was a nearly 10-inch long whale tooth that had been engraved with the U.S. presidential seal by the esteemed scrimshaw artist Milton Delano. Jackie O had commissioned the piece to give to her husband as a Christmas present in 1962, which was the last Christmas he was alive to see. He took that gift to his grave when he was interred in Arlington National Cemetery after he was assassinated less than a year later. A few other items JFK was buried with were intimate letters from his wife and children, as well as a pair of 18-karat gold cufflinks. When John's brother was likewise assassinated half a decade later, it was rumored he was buried with a PT-109 tie clip and a solid silver rosary. Bela Lugosi Best known for his iconic portrayal of Count Dracula in the 1931 film Dracula, one of Lugosi's most iconic wardrobe choices was his signature cape. Shortly before he passed away in 1956, Lugosi gifted his precious cape to his wife and asked her to hold on to it for their son. After he died, his family decided it fitting for him to be buried in his famous cape. However, the one in his casket is actually a more lightweight variant that he wore when making public appearances. The actual cape ended up being put up for auction in 2011, but failed to sell. 
Bob Marley. Should it surprise anyone that Rastafarian reggae icon Bob Marley was buried with cannabis? To Marley, weed wasn't just a drug, it was a sacrament. Marley was also buried with one of his favorite guitars, although the exact make and model has been the subject of some debate. More than likely, however, it was his beloved Gibson Les Paul. There's no word yet on what strain of ganja he took with him to the grave, but it was probably lamb's bread, a variant he was known to be especially fond of. William S. Burroughs, the highly celebrated beatnik poet and novelist, was reportedly buried with a fedora, a ballpoint pen, a sword cane, and a loaded 38 caliber revolver, presumably to fight off any zombies. Leonard Bernstein, this famous composer and conductor, was best known for his musicals West Side Story and On the Town. When he passed away, he was buried with several items that were personally significant to him. Some of these included a lucky penny, a piece of amber, a baton, a pocket score of Gustav Mahler's Fifth Symphony, and a copy of Alice in Wonderland. While all these items were significant to Bernstein in one way or another, reportedly the one that meant the most to him was the composition by Mahler. According to one account, the symphony was placed directly on top of his heart, inside his casket. Now it's time to hear from you. Have you ever given any thought into what you'd like to be buried with? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.